So here we have an old hit and miss model engine. I bought this at Cool Spring this past week. And if you're smart, you should never buy a model engine that you don't see run or at least don't pay the price of a running engine. And uh, although it's running beautifully now, if you want to uh, follow along, I'm going to do a kind of a tutorial on the kind of problems you run into when you buy an engine at a show that you don't see run. Uh, I've heard all the reasons. I forgot a battery. I forgot fuel. It's just been sitting. Uh, I inherited it. Those things may be true, but still, don't expect to get it home and see it run without some work. In this case, uh, it was quite a bit of work. So, I'm going to shut the engine off and then I'll go through with a description of everything I had to do to it to get it in this condition. So you'll also notice this old doesn't have the brush, uh, the B cast into the hopper. It does have uh, brush cast into the flywheel. So I'm not quite sure uh, who would have made these castings. I'd be happy to hear comments uh, if someone knows more about the maker of this particular engine or the castings, but uh, just hang on a little bit and we'll go through some of the issues you might run into when you buy an engine that you don't see running. So here we go. I brought this engine home from Cool Spring. It is on a nice cart. You can see it's a steerable cart and you can see the handle is uh, broken. I can fix that. Uh, you can see I have a rod put through here uh, so that the wheels can't move and that keeps it from jumping off my bench. I do that a lot at uh, engine shows when you can't pay attention for several engines running. Uh, I've had them work their way off the table sometimes, so that seems to help prevent that. So let's start off with, first of all, this is the ugliest muffler. It's supposed to be made out of brass. I'm going to get hold of the blueprints and make the correct muffler. This one is made out of epoxy and two copper end caps from uh, the plumbing supply store. I think it looks terrible and I will get the correct muffler uh, made and get that on there before I take it to a show. It's missing the points cover which is actually here but I took it off because I'll show you one of the issues I had. So to start with, um, I got it home and I noticed that I had compression on both the compression stroke and the exhaust stroke. So that's not good. The next thing I discovered was uh, that the points were closed all of the time. So it was never gonna spark. So um, my guess would be the fellow that had this engine never saw it run. Uh, I can't imagine he had it running and then did all this to it purposely so it wouldn't run. So we're going to just say he never had it running. How it got in the condition I found it, I don't really know. But the first thing I had to do was get the valve timing right. So I pulled this gear here and brought the crankshaft up to where the valve should just start to open on the exhaust stroke and I set 
the uh, cam to where it should be, put it back together. Now I had compression when I was supposed to and no compression on the exhaust stroke. So next I looked at the points. I never did like this setup for the points. I think those are Clinton points if I'm correct. I don't uh, never had a Clinton engine but I've built uh, model engines that uh, took these uh, points in the blueprint. So when this moves you'll see that move forward and right there there's a little offset and that has to hit the points um, that insulator and that opens the point so you loosen those four screws and you bring the piston up the top dead center and I you really can't see the points open good enough to really set the timing accurately at least I can't so I put a ohm meter across the points and I turn the crankshaft the top dead center and then I adjust that little block until the points just open that puts the uh, spark right at top dead center that'll get your engine running and you can adjust it a little bit one way or the other from there to your liking or to whatever makes the engine run best. Next was the uh, governor and it wasn't working. It, it um, can't remember whether it latched out completely all the time or wouldn't latch out at all. Uh, I think it was would latch out and then stick there until the engine would shut down so as you can see there's a little spring down in in there and that spring was gone so when this lever would uh, lock out lever I'll call it I'm sure that's not the right name uh, when that would uh, latch and hold the exhaust valve open when it was supposed to release uh, that spring wasn't there so it wouldn't pop back out so I found a spring and I adjusted that the next thing was hard to point at that this screw was screwed all the way in to where the back side of it was hitting on the spokes of the flywheel <laughs> so uh, it had come loose and was out of adjustment and um, so I adjusted that the governor uh, was running the engine at the speed that I liked and uh, finally we we had an engine that was running and hitting and missing like we wanted to the only other issue is it wants to um, uh, double hit I don't know what you would call that it kind of fires twice instead of a single time until you close the choke. It wants to run best with the choke about three-fourths closed and until I get the blueprints I'm just gonna run it like that. It runs fine. It's not following the plug but my guess would be someone drilled the the hole in the carburetor for the air too large and I can run it like this with the choke partially closed or I can uh, make a bushing to fit in that opening and reduce the uh, air inlet size. That takes quite a bit of fooling around to get it right and uh, I may just leave it uh, like this. So um, anyways, other than those few problems, uh, it's a good running engine. Took me an evening of messing around and uh, I still have to make the muffler. So just uh, some advice to either beware. When I sell engines at an engine show, I show every one of them running. Uh, if I say it runs, I want to show that it runs. That's the way you ought to buy a running engine. 
and uh, so if you're smart and they can't show you the engine running you should just once again assume it doesn't run and pay accordingly so um, I got two other engines at the same show uh, it's unusual I usually get one or two every day so uh, it was actually a slow week for me at Cool Spring although the place was packed and uh, I don't collect the big engines there were plenty of people uh, buying and selling the big engines a lot more than model engines so I uh, hope you enjoyed my review thanks for watching